All right, picks and bans for game number two between Flashpoint and E United. E United looked really solid in game one. I mean, Flashpoint didn't really give them a, a chance to to look bad. I mean, it was always E United on the front foot, but remember, they need to take this 2-0 victory, cannot afford to stumble against Flashpoint. They definitely still want to maintain that kind of pressure that they've been uh, asserting onto Flashpoint. But if I'm Flashpoint, I, I really just want to see them play a little bit safer. They were kind of reckless for the first 10 minutes of that game. And I, I think that Flashpoint could give this a, a fair run for their money against E United if they don't try and make, for instance, those kind of Gold Fury calls or lazy backing in the mid lane. I don't disagree stuff. with you. I mean, Flashpoint is a team with potential. They didn't really show it in game one, but I think that whenever they're locked in, they ha they have a chance to take a game off just about anyone in North America. Didn't see that in game one. We'll see if we see it here in game two. E United ban out two pressure soul laners that Benji probably would have liked to first pick, but decides didn't want to. Said it's going to be the soul, whereas Flashpoint answer back with Mirage's signature nemesis and Hu Yi. I, I like the Hu Yi pickup just because it prevents Panda Cat from having this guy. On yeah. top of that, Nemesis is just such a good look for Mirage. It'll allow him to have a little bit of the survivability factor. And I, I think it fares a little bit better against that Camazots. But you give Camazots and Fafnir up. So E United with a pretty strong first three selections. Flashpoint pretty strong in their own right for the first two. Could be the Kepri again for Shadow Q. No, it's going to be raw for Man Ray. Man Ray wanted to just select a comfort pick for himself. And for good reason, the raw performances that we've seen out of Man Ray so far have been incredibly solid. So I, I think that this might be the best bet for Flashpoint if they're going to look to try and secure a win. True. I mean, a little worried about how little setup there is for this raw out of the jungle. Usually you want something like a Thor right there to secure that Searing Pain ultimate. But Man Ray pretty well versed on the raw. Expect him to try and hit those without any sort of setup. Flashpoint banning away Scotty and Robin E United focusing out Shadow Q with those Geb and Terra bands, leaving up that Kepri that Shadow Q actually looked very good on in that game. And it is going to be a Hercules locked in for Flashpoint. And I, I also like just how much pressure Walrus could potentially have on this Hercules. I think it's a fairly safe pickup, especially since Osiris and Balone are already taken out. Rom the pick for there for Panda Cat. It's going to be Amaterasu for Benji, one of his signature gods. So expect that to be up against that Hercules in lane. Now we're just waiting on what's likely to be the support here for Shadow Q. A lot of aura buffs for E United pretty much already. You've got the mobility from the Amaterasu as well as that coerce from Fafnir. So they're really looking to boost up. And honestly, it's the Fafnir realm soul that I think Flashpoint are really going to have to keep an eye on. Yeah, I mean, you look at how much objective damage E United can do. You put that Amaterasu debuff on a Gold Fury and stand in damage stance and throw coerce onto Fafnir, uh, from Fafnir onto Rom or Soul. That Gold Fury is not going to be standing for long. Game number two, just about ready for E United and Flashpoint. E United with a very uh, similar draft to that of game one, at least in terms of the mid jungle, Soul and Camazots. But the rest of their draft, a, a little bit of a change of pace, with a little bit less pressure in that solo lane with Ayama Tarasu compared to the Bologna they had in game one. But a little bit more pressure, I would say, from this Rom Fafnir than their previous uh, duo lane. And Polar Bear Mike and Panicat already pushed up to that T1 tower line of Flashpoint, looking to clear this as fast as possible, maybe even rotate over or just fall back to their own buffs. I mean, Rom, correct me if I'm Rom, but he's got the best level <laughs> one clear in the game as a hunter, right? With the Astral Arrows, yes. And I'm ignoring what you did there that entirely. Was good. That was really good. Dad grows back. Fire Elementals. Well, yeah, it's Father's Day. Man Ray comes around the side. <laughs> nice Earthbreaker there from Walrus. Actually leaves Verizial in place. One more auto attack's going to do it in Flashpoint with the first blood. Got to give shoutouts to Walrus there with the Earthbreaker through the wall to get Verizial to stay in place and guarantee some damage out of the rest of Flashpoint. You see it happen so many times where the Hercules solo laner will opt for that Earthbreaker, level one, and they'll try to get that pool into the tower line. It almost never works. But it came through pretty clutch for Walrus. Sure did. Benji got a lot of solo farm during that little engagement, though, and now is going to try and invade Flashpoint's speed buff. May actually get a chance to get this here. Certainly going to get the two little ones and will actually succeed. Decides he doesn't want to pick it up. Actually, he's got the blue buff, so couldn't pick it up even if he wanted to. So Benji going to be able to take it away all by himself. And that's the power of Boombas as well. Benji didn't have to worry about losing too much health because he had that Boombas, which permitted him to make that solo farm. So, and, and the Fire Elementals as well. So even though Walrus comes up big and gets the assist on the first blood, it's going to end up with Benji being ahead almost certainly in terms of gold and experience. 
just from getting all that solo, all those solo camps for himself. Sops and Shadow Q rotate towards the middle lane to get those left side mid harpies. They think about going in mid just to, just to help Man Ray out as he gets poked out pretty significantly by Verizio. Another start without a starter item for Man Ray. Really likes his Book of Doth Rush to start off the game. It's kind of something that he's always preached and held true to himself. He absolutely loves the Book of Thoth Rush, and it, it works out for him sometimes. We didn't really get to see it prosper in game number one, but that's kind of just because of how heavily pressured he was. Mirage is going to be able to take this wave all by himself as Man Ray completely out of mana, going to head back, but finishes off the book. So two and a half minutes. It's a pretty good time to finish off a Book of Thought. That first blood bounty really helping out Flashpoint's mid laner. And I, I think that's really what can be credited to that Book of Thought Rush working out so well. Panicat just trying to spam as much damage as possible, getting a lot of poke onto both Sops and Shadow Q. And this is what you expect from the ROM that got the early pressure in this lane, especially one that has the red buff. Red buff uh, for Flashpoint, Sops doesn't have it right now, so not going to be able to compete with that early clear that ROM can bring to the table. Verizio still waiting to hit his level 5 and get that ultimate available. A little bit behind after being first blooded, whereas Mirage has that Divine Retribution ready and waiting. Getting punished for that early aggression, I think, was probably the best thing that Flashpoint could have done to Verizio, but alongside of Chaos, he should be just... He should still be relatively safe in that mid lane. So pretty safe clear overall. There's a silence on a panic out to prevent him from getting out of danger there. Panda has the Aegis, and I think that was the idea, was to lock him down with the silence into the knockup. If Sops drops the ultimate and, and Panda Cat doesn't step forward into Shadow Q, that's probably first blood. Well thought out from Flashpoint's dual lane, but Panda Cat makes the right play and gets out of danger. Well, the other thing, too, was Sops missed the one onto Pandacat that would have guaranteed the sun, the stun inside of the ultimate. So had that connected and then been followed up by Shadow Q silence into his knockup stun, I, that would have been a great and easy first blood, or not first blood, but first kill in the duo lane. Almost. Close, but no cigar for Flashpoint. United seem to be doing a great job of controlling these neutral objectives, and it's no surprise that the team that you know, still has a chance to go to Valencia as one that focuses on these oracles and on the fire elementals. Take, taking that farm off the map, not only giving it to yourself, but keeping it away from the opposition is so important. I've also got to respect the discipline there by Panicats and not just Panic Aegis. Sure. He really, after the ricochet was off the mark, he didn't seem like he was concerned for dying there. And again, going for this Devourer's Gauntlet rush, this time not waiting for after boots like he did in game number one going right for it as the Rom, and a little bit more uh, more standard, I would say, on Rom than Hu Yi. A lot of uh, a lot of hunters like to just play for the late game with this with this style of hunter. And again, Panicat's probably going to be free to sort of just free farm out this lane. Sops might look for that initial aggression. This is kind of the stage where a Hu Yi can really look to take advantage of Rom, especially if Panicat isn't opting for that mobility route. He can try and just land that ultimate with the ricochet and get massive amounts of poke out. And Sops has his warrior tab by already completed, so you're right, there's absolutely a time where we could see Flashpoint's Hunter trying to abuse Panda Cat's lack of mobility and damage by going for the later game option. Can you settle th this this debate for me? What what's better on Hu Yi, Warrior Tabai or Ninja Tabai? Because everyone just seems to have a preference. It just it really is based on player preference, though, and what you're looking to do in the early game. You can go Ninja Tabai or Warrior Tabai. It's it's all based around what you're planning on building after. All right, so uh, when you see Sops building Warrior Tabai, what does that signal to you that he's likely to be building? Ickful. Okay, going for that attack would, speed second. He he should be looking for the Ickful if he's opting for the Warrior Tabai first. Fair enough. Now he's waiting alongside Shadow Q, trying to get a run back on that last kill potential that didn't go Flashpoint's way, but Panic had a little wiser to that strategy and backs up, especially since he's all alone. His PBM stops the back from Shadow Q. This one a little bit slower pace than uh, than e United and Flashpoint's first game, where e United really came storming out of the gates. No, uh, no more slowing down on the right hand side. As Walrus is just able to escape after both Verizio and Benji use their ultimates. Mirage answered back with one of his own, but neither team falls. This uh, this healing from Flashpoint is going to have to be answered by something from e United. And there it is, Sops looking for that ricochet ultimate combination. He's got the in-hands, though, which are also pretty strong. He can keep catching him, and that's exactly what he's going to do, forcing out the roll. Ooh, Oof. that ricochet was close. I don't know if it would have been enough, but... It wouldn't have killed him. It would have been, been nice, though. Yeah, it would have looked good. And that's really what matters. I mean, you got to make some plays for the Giffy Cat every once in a while. 
Remember when Giphy Cat was a thing? Now it's just clips. I'm, I'm glad that clips are a thing, though. It makes it so much easier. That's true. It does make it a little bit easier. Gold Fury is available as the Oracles are about to respawn. We've seen E United be the real aggressors onto this neutral objective so far in this set, but Man Ray having 55 stacks on that Book of Thoth means that he has an opportunity to try and make a play around these if he so chooses. Both Sops and Shadow Q waiting in the wings for e United to start these up. There's a Searing Pain. It comes out and means that those Oracles are split. So Man Ray trades his ultimate to guarantee that e United doesn't get that vision. And that's worth it. I mean, Raw Ultimate has such a low cooldown. You might as well use it in those kind of circumstances just so you don't have to worry about the Oracle vision being in favor of e United. Especially if Man Ray's backing right now, meaning that, you know, that's going to be uh, that 45 seconds that's remaining on that ultimate cooldown. Probably not going to be used in that time. And going to be heading back to base anyways. They're not even worried about the mana consumption for that ultimate. I agree with you. I think that's the wise decision from Flashpoint's new mid laner. This game seems to be much more... Uh, Flashpoint seems to be much more locked in than they were in game one right from the outset. A lot more controlled as far as their gameplay is concerned. And I, I think that that's really just what they need to do. They can't permit a team like United to take control and choose the pacing of the game. They need to establish it themselves. They've got a pretty good late game this time around as well. I mean, the, the Nemesis, of course, excellent in the later stages, but Hu Yi as well. Hercules becoming that raid boss. Barizio going to get knocked up and controlled a little bit. Mirage with some decent damage onto e United's jungler. We talked about the healing coming out of Flashpoint. Barizio, of course, has some innate healing in that kit. Panicat looked like he wanted the solo kill on that left, or no, actually just used his ultimate in response to that of Sops to get out of those suns. He just didn't want to take unnecessary poke damage. He is still sitting at level two boots, hasn't had a chance to back just yet to finish those off, and because of that, doesn't want to risk dying unnecessarily. Looks like you were right, Taco. She's likely to be the Ikaval second there for Sops. Could be a shifter shield after that, I'm assuming, considering how popular that item has been. Plus, it's what Sops opted for last game on the Kern, so I'm anticipating the shifter shield as well, especially since Flashpoint isn't ridiculously far behind already. So so the shifters will actually have a little bit more relevancy. Look at, look at what Polar Bear Mike has done. No boots. Start off this one. Instead, first item winged blade. Why? Why? This is old school. It's not the first time that we've seen a support opt for the wing blade rush, and it works incredibly well against Flashpoint. They have the nemesis, they've got the slow from the Hu Yi, and they've got the slow from the raw. Realistically speaking, there's enough slows on the side of Flashpoint to make that wing blade rush viable. Do you think that we'll see an, uh, boots now after Polar Bear Mike in that second slot, or do you think he'll go right into his aura items? He could look to opt for boots secondary, but he could also opt for the more defensive route of just rushing the Thieves, potentially. Ferezio going to show his face in that soul lane. Mirage ends up taking the most of that damage. Walrus throws out the boulder to clear the wave and do some poke damage. Ferezio with a, with a quick response ultimate there. Probably not needed, though, with the driving strike potential follow-up. Maybe it was in that it was necessary. He might have been concerned that the Earthbreaker would be up in time for Walrus to just keep chasing him. So I, I think expending the ultimate there to play it safe, probably the best look. So Verizio in game one went for Jotun's Wrath right after Boots into a Brawler's Beat Stick, into Titan's Bane, I believe. It was just all pen all the time. This game, going for the Shifter Shield, so as you meant, as we talked about, I mean, it, it used to be when these new items are, are found that everyone thinks they're good, it's all the time. But there's a time and place, and I think that I like Verizio's adaptation to find that it's going to serve him a little bit more purpose in this scenario. Well, Shifters is also only 1150 gold for the T2 aspect of it, which I believe gives you the 20 power and the 10 or 15 physical protections. Oh, quick ultimate there out of Panic Out to give himself CC immunity for Sops' Ricochet with the mark. It hits all three shots and then one or two autos afterwards. So Sops goes down to about half HP, but now Panicat without that ultimate, though now hitting level 12 next back, will have his purification beads. So we won't need that CC immunity quite as badly now. Sops just didn't want to pressure into a full wave. And I, I think that it's better for him to wait because now that Panicat's ultimate is down, he has a solid chance to connect that Ricochet into the Suns since Panicat only has the Aegis. 11 and a half minutes in, e United and Flashpoint locked up completely even. Flashpoint has the very, very slight gold lead. We credit that to the first blood. Went Man Ray's way, courtesy of a really good play from Walrus and Mirage on top of it. The, again, e United 
can I really afford to drop this game? And, and Polar Red Mike's own words said that if they you know, if they don't 2-0 Flashpoint, they're in a lot of trouble in terms of qualifying for DreamHack Valencia. Very on-point in-hands from Panicat there. And uh, going back to what I was stating about Virizio's T2 Shifter's Rush as opposed to the Jotuns that we saw from last game, it's 11.50 gold in comparison to 15.50 for the T2. You get a decent enough power spike and a small bit of protections, which can really help you out. And it's really just, he didn't have the same lead. Sops getting boxed down once more by Panicat. Virizio thinking about going for this dive, but doesn't have a second relic. Oh, he wants it. No shifters, but here he goes around the backside. Sops drops the ultimate, but immediately gets hit by those vampiric bats. Has the Aegis, so Panicat's got to wait it out, but he finds it anyways. He united on the board, courtesy of Panicat's accuracy with the snipes. And now this is in rough for Flashpoint. They're going to have to try and defend this grouping from E9 after losing their tower already. 4v3. Panicat already very low, forced into the Aegis. Good ultimate out of Chaos. Interrupts that silence coming from Shadow Q while Virizial handled Man Ray on the back. Shadow Q, the focus now. He's likely to fall. Bracer of Undoing buys him a moment, but not enough. Virizial puts number two on the board for E United. Not only did Chaos pr stop that silence from Shadow Q, but dropping the ultimate on top of Panicat all to Turns the rest of Flashpoint from trying to chase down him. Walrus stunned, CC chained by Polar Bear Mike. Benji peels off the Gold Fury and tries to help the squad. Panicat is going to take up that Gold Fury. Not er, is fully stacked on that Devourer's Gauntlets, but not enough power to solo it all by himself quite yet. But with Chaos and the rest of the team showing up, should be a little bit easier. Good leash there as the Boulder comes through, but Man Ray still has that ultimate. Very low on mana. Not sure if he's going to have enough as Chaos gets sundered in the middle lane by Walrus after the driving strike. Gold Fury still pulled here by United, and it is going to go down in favor of the blue side. E United get two kills and the Gold Fury and get it, get that gold lead in their favor now up about 2,500. Unfortunately, Benji was just playing goalkeeper and zoning Man Ray and a couple of others from Flashpoint from getting near, but it's really only Man Ray that he had to worry about zoning. Man Ray is the real steal potential for Flashpoint in that scenario, so very well played. Chaos and Polar Bear Mike alongside Benji here to stop Flashpoint from getting a response objective of their own. They will force them off. Flashpoint decide they've got some buffs up and Want to get the guaranteed farm. Wise call by them. Sops getting some solo farm on the left-hand side. A little bit down to Panda Cat right now. He was the first to fall on the side of Flashpoint. Is working on what's going to be a shifter shield. Has the tower shield right now. But Panda Cat immediately going for the chin size after his boots. Not a lot of attack speed in that build quite yet, but Rom Steroid makes up for that lack of attack speed. And again, that's really all that you need is the ROM steroid alongside of the chins to really make it worthwhile. And considering that he's fighting into the Ganesh, the Nemesis, and the Hercules, a chin rush as opposed to an executioner could very well favor him. So whenever one hunter has Ikaval and the other doesn't, usually it's just as simple as, oh, the hunter who has Ikaval wins all trades. Is that the case, though, whenever Panda Cat's building lifesteal like he is right now? Well, you can win the trades early on, but as soon as he gets the boots online alongside of the fully stacked Devos, it becomes a lot harder to win those trades. You have to be so accurate with all of your abilities and auto attacks, not to mention that you, you can only really look to punish him for those first two items missing. Now that he's got the chins online, it makes it even harder to fight into. Benji pushed under tower, but Walrus has used the majority of his abilities, and Benji's the one who's playing the aggressor. Polar Bear Mike was thinking about jumping over the wall and trying to CC Chain Walrus down, but with Man Ray and Shadow Q lurking in that right side jungle, decides against it. Now Virizio and Chaos gonna start up this portal demon. Coerce buff making that Camazot swing pretty quickly. Panicat even shows up himself, and it's gonna go down, but oh. it's in favor of Flashpoint. Well-timed snipe coming out of Man Ray. Steals away the objective. Now it's gonna be a teleport in from Walrus, though he could just take the portal. Mirage is in trouble as he's forced to dash away. Walrus does decide to teleport in, and Panicat's going for the snipes. One off the mark, needs to find the third, but doesn't know where Mirage is, can't quite find it. Mirage was actually better. <laughs> he was well hidden underneath that tree lining, but I, I think he almost exposed himself for a second there to Panicat. Walrus. Now it's a T1 Siege. Beautiful pluck there, but Chaos has the purification beads ready to go. E United could have uh, could have gone much better for them, but a good play out of Man Ray and a good disengage from the rest of the squad gets them out of danger. 
That was just so incredibly well timed by Man Ray to steal that one away. Solid chunk of damage to Mirage, but I don't think he's done just yet trying to chase down Benji. Well, Flashpoint, they don't they don't look like they're done in that mid lane. Sops is here and has some good power after finishing off that shifters, but not quite enough attack speed to maybe get this tower down for the time being. Mirage is gonna back. Portal looks like it's not available any longer, so will not be able to just pop through and help the squad right away. But Flashpoint making use of that sustain that's in their composition. Not only does Hercules have amazing healing, but Man Ray can heal up that entire squad. And they're still holding on to keeping the lead relatively close. Walrus, first one in, going to tank up that tower a little bit, mitigate wounds, returns the chunk of damage that he received. But Flashpoint again, decide they're done there and going to head back and farm up their buffs. They've got quite a few respawning. Should be all four, fairly certain. I, I really like how Flashpoint have played a lot more discipline in game number two. Despite what went down in game number one, they haven't really been doing the uh, super risky plays. They've kind of just been playing a little bit safer into the mark. And I think a large part of this is because of the fact that they have Man Ray on that raw. And with the healer composition, as long as you don't fall drastically far behind and you stay grouped, staying grouped is probably the most important part and I think they can fight into E United fairly well. There's a decent amount of AOE on the side of E United to punish Flashpoint if they are to group up in that raw heal. But the really only the one that I'm scared of, if I'm FP, is that Stellar Burst Supernova combination. Verizio's bad out of hell, of course, gaining extra damage whenever he hits additional gods. So you got to be worried about that. But fairly easy to just spread out whenever you see that bat come flapping at you. So I, I think that Flashpoint really can utilize that raw heal pretty well. Want to check in with Polar Bear Mike's build real quick. We were at, we were thinking about what he was going to go for. It looks like he did go for Boots and then sold the Lono's Mask to get that Gauntlet of Thebes. So plenty of movement speed now and has that Aura item completed. But Shadow Q has a Sovereignty, so Flashpoint's team going to be a little bit tankier to the damage of the solo jungle and hunter than that of United. And plus, Shadow Q also has the Dharmic Pillars, which is a, a great AoE ultimate if, it, if the positioning on it is right. PBM in that front side. Doesn't get to throw the hammer because of the silence from Shadow Q. Gold Fury has respawned. United got the first one. Benji, level 18 already, dashes in, try to find it. There goes the snipes from Panicat, trying to finish off Man Ray, but instead turns his attention to Sops. Verizial going to find big damage with that bat out of hell, and Benji's going to fall, or excuse me, make Sops fall. Polar Bear Mike gets underneath that tier 2 tower as Panicat cleans up Shadow Q in that jungle, a quick two kills for E United. They've got an opportunity here, Taco. Do they go for the Gold Fury? Do they go for the tier two tower and left. Looks like the 1500 gold they can get is gonna both. be the call. They can honestly get both because of how quickly Soul and Rom are able to shred these objectives. I mean, that T2 tower just disappeared. Almost doubling the damage that Flashpoint put out in that last team fight. If you take a look at the team fight recap, Gold Fury is the call now. Walrus has the baseball ready to go and Probably going to throw it to try and steal it, but a perfectly timed to reset. Stun wasn't quite there to stop Walrus's dash from getting out of the danger, but this Gold Fury likely to go down. The Earthbreaker's there, and another reset is instead United look to chase down Walrus. Chaos says, I'll take care of him. Panicat, you can get the Gold Fury. Good snipe from Man Ray. Almost finishes off Arizial. He's going to be able to escape with just one HP. Mirage trying to do the same from Benji. Actually turns it around with that ultimate. Good Dharmic Pillar as well. Benji completely body blocked in there. And Man Ray <laughs> is going to be able to find it. Number two for him. And number two in total for Flashpoint. Just completely locked down on that backside. A little bit greedy chasing after Mirage is so deep, but the zone was efficient and it is E United who were able to secure that gold fury. Combine that with the gold they just received from the T2 tower. That is a large burst of gold to receive all at once. 5k in total now in the lead for E United. A little bit less than 4,000 experience though. Flashpoint has done a pretty good job of keeping this game close for the time being. And again, as we mentioned, this late game composition for Flashpoint is pretty strong though. E United is probably stronger. Kamen's not the only one who's going to fall off towards the hyper late game, but even then it's not a, it's not, you know, the, the Thanatos of old. Verizio has to use his ultimate as CC immunity to get away from Walrus, but Walrus may have been the sacrificial lamb here. No, the bait is good. Flashpoint got the portal demon while Wal Walrus was handling three on the bottom right-hand side and doesn't even get punished for it. Good objective play there. 
out of Flashpoint. I'm kind of surprised that United didn't look to play that a little bit more aggressively. I would have anticipated them trying to steal away that Portal Demon. I think that they have a strong enough team fight. They just demonstrated how strong their team fight is by gas pedaling down Flashpoint on their side of the map. Either way, United let it go. And now they, uh, they're they deciding to play it a little passive right now. United's siege potential is phenomenal though, Taco. I mean, not only the coerce and the, and the objective shred from Rom and Soul, but think about Benji being in that damage dance, providing extra damage to those two characters. Doesn't even have to be too far away from them to do it. And then you, uh, all of a sudden, your towers probably won't last very long. No, and I think that's kind of just the mindset for United here is just shred everything on the map, never really giving Flashpoint an opportunity to catch up. But Flashpoint are doing a fairly solid job still with keeping up, all things considered. Blink forward by Verizio, looking for the damage on his stops, but he's going to be able to dive bomb away, at least for the moment. Verizio not giving up this chase, though, trying to chase him down. Aegis is good for stops to get him out of that danger. Chaos drops the ultimate right on top of Shadow Q and a beautiful supernova races the support for Flashpoint. Panacat going to finish off Mirage. He's looking to do the same to Sops. Can't quite find the last shot, but it's two quick kills for E United. Chaos gets picked up and bouldered by Walrus. But not enough to find the kill. Can't say the same about Benji on the Sops. That's three in total in this one for E United. Seven on the game. Walrus trying to get away from the pressure from Polar Bear. Mike Man Ray can only throw out the beam to help him as the Tier 2 tower just melts to the damage from Chaos and Panda Cat. Three kills, two towers, E United's way. E United are just completely deconstructing Flashpoint in these team fights. They are splitting them up so drastically that they never really get a chance for this raw sustain to even happen. And the burst damage that they have is so strong that again, that little bit of a heal that you would normally be able to acquire from a raw and just re-engage with after you sustain some is unable to happen. In the last game, there was a lot of poke coming out of E United where they'd throw a couple of Kamazot's abilities, they'd throw some Soul Stellar bursts, and then they would initiate. This time, respecting that raw sustain, when they go, they go. It's been every single time. Saw this kind of play from Flashpoint in game one. It was around the Gold Fury. This one makes a lot more sense to me, Taco. Trying to pull this Fire Giant right after all of the United had based, but they couldn't get it done in time. And now, United saying, thanks for the startup, friends. We might just take this for ourselves. Walrus trying to bait them into the chase, and it will get United off that objective. But if Walrus can get out, that's a good look for the Flashpoint solo laner. Boulder comes down, but Benji going to stun out Man Ray. Good push there on the Chaos, who didn't have any purification beads. And Walrus going to be able to start it off for Flashpoint with a big pick. Now Benji's isolated on that right-hand side. Dash, body blocked. There's the Nemesis ult as well. Benji with a diving strike. Gets hit by the driving strike, but that may have actually saved his life. Needs one more hit. The Snipe not going to do it. Mirage looking to chase him down. Slice and dice is going to be necessary, but Benji's going to be able to get out of danger. Big shouts to that sprint coming from Polar Bear Mike. That could have been Flashpoint's window, Taco, but they only found one. Benji is going to be able to teleport back in. Those are kind of the kills that you just have to lock down. Just everybody from Flashpoint being unable to scare Benji. Frenzy popped. Fire Giant below 50% HP. Benji is back and immediately making life difficult for Sops. Locks him near those Fire Giant pools. Fire Giant reset now as Panacat thinking about picking it back up for himself and his team. Besides, he's going to back a little bit too low. Benji continues the chase onto Sops. Reflective Mirror is going to miss. Sops likely to get out until that dazzling offense comes through. Good hesitation on that dive bomb land as well. Verizio looking to pick him up now. It's just dive after <laughs> dive for me, United. But Sops still going to be able to survive. I, I think that if Flashpoint weren't as far behind as they are, there would be a lot more punishment happening to E United for these consistent dives quite a bit of focus on the Sops in this one and it's done a pretty good job of surviving for the most part. Nearing full build. It's completed his fourth item. That's going to be the chin size. Excellent against the HP that Benji and Polar Bear Mike have built for themselves. Pretty good against the Kamazots as well. Looking like he's going to be getting a bigger health pool. Son of Gaia likely to be that that sixth or fifth item for Verizial. Wouldn't surprise me. I mean, he can get away with building the Stone of Gaia, and it's pretty efficient against Walrus as well, just so he doesn't have to worry about the Earthbreaker coming through. So I, I can't blame him for looking towards that option, plus just a little bit of HV5 regen, which is always nice as well. Gold Fury was almost stolen there by Sops, and that would have been a big play out of Flashpoint's Hunter. 
10k lead right now for E United. A little bit under that in terms of experience, and now it's E United looking at the portal demon. Ricochet not going to find a home there for Sops, and the grouping is good for Rizzi. He's on his way back from base, though, and this could be a man advantage for Flashpoint if they recognize that Verizio isn't lurking in the jungle, but difficult to have that information with how much ward coverage United has on the other side of the map. Shadow Q already getting bursted by the crits coming through from Panic Cat. Chaos gonna get credit for the kill, his second of the game. Walrus doing his best to handle Chaos on that backside, but not enough to knock him down as now he's the focus of Rizio cutting off his escape route. Walrus has that ultimate and could do some damage in this tight corridor. There's the push and big damage coming out of Walrus and a big heal from him as well. Mirage immediately diving into the back line. He's gonna be able to find the kill on a Chaos, but pays for it. Panic Cat makes him pay. Mount Man Ray's the focus. Verizio chasing him down with that bat out of hell. Panda Cat cleans up Walrus. Verizio's gonna knock down Man Ray as well. They lose Chaos to E United, but find four in response. Who needs a portal demon? Let's get the big guy, Fire Giant. It's gonna be the call. Too easy to just lock down this Fire Giant and then they can secure the Portal Demon shortly after just so they have a way to get back to that side of the map. A siege down that T2 tower in the right hand side. And again, just a really unfortunate circumstance for Flashpoint there. I, I think that Walrus did an excellent job buying as much time as possible, but the burst heal that just came through all at once for three members shortly after dropping his boulder was just a little bit too much for Flashpoint to handle. I agree with you what you said earlier though, Taco, and that's that if Flashpoint just wasn't quite this far behind, they probably would have taken the last few engagements. United's engagements have not been particularly clean, and if you're a United fan or something like that, you could probably just say, yeah, well, if we were, if they weren't so far ahead, then they wouldn't be playing so sloppy, and sure, but I, I think that E United has not looked as clean in game two as they did in game one. Flashpoint certainly showing a little bit more uh, resolve and grit in this one. And they've, they've gotten United into some tough spots, but just haven't been able to punish them for it. Well, that's the thing, though, is that is this gameplay still strong enough for you to find into a victory and boost your point set for Valencia? Yes, but is it good enough against EU? Probably not. Well, a W is a W, and that's all United is looking for right now. Polar Bear Mike gets poked out pretty consistently there, down to about half HP, but with the Fire Giant regen, that HP 5 coming from the Sovereignty, and, of course, the heal from the Coerce probably won't be too big of a deal. No towers remaining for E United to take. They have to rely on getting these Phoenixes, and we saw just how quickly Panda Cat and Chaos can shred through these objectives when given the opportunity. Well, now they've got a Fire Giant buff. It's gonna get only even better for E United in terms of that objective shred. Walrus was looking for the pluck in, but couldn't quite find it. Benji the first one in, and Walrus uses his ult just to clear the wave and poke out Panda Cat. There's the girdle. Panda, very low already, but he's gonna take to the sky just in time. Suns come down from Sops, but don't really make an impact. Panda Cat uses the Aegis. That gets him out of the snipe coming from Man Ray. And now Verizio's trying to turn it on the aggressive for E United. Forces everyone from Flashpoint back. Panda Cat just goes to the back harpies to heal up a little bit and wait for the sustain to come through from Flashpoint. There's the sustain coming from Man Ray on the red side. That was still a fairly strong hold. PBM still in that factory form. He's got the Coerce to drop here pretty soon. And I think it's going to be E United looking to siege yet again. Coerce comes through, but Panda Cat is still pretty low on mana. Pretty healthy at this stage, though. Right side Phoenix likely to fall. There's the ultimate on Chaos doing big damage to Sops and Mirage, forcing them back and allowing Panda Cat and himself to get that Phoenix. Shadow Q in trouble. Panda going to roll forward, but is that a Bracer of Undoing that may have been used there by Shadow Q? Either way, he saves his own life in some regard. Panda Cat's on the right-hand side, but Chaos says, I got this one for us, don't even worry about it. Mid Phoenix falls, no worries there for E United. Mid and right side of Phoenix is gone. Left side Phoenix still stands for the moment, but Flashpoint looks like they want to keep this engagement going. A Flashpoint need to be careful here. They wanted to go in because Mirage had his ultimate available. They're looking to try and burst down Verizio, but to no avail. No help for Sops in the back. Now everyone starts to turn, and Panda Cat's going to be the first to fall. Verizio answers back onto his jungle counterpart, Mirage, taking his third spill of the game. Sops chased down by Benji. Silence, Reflective Mirror, Aegis there to buy him a second, but one auto attack's going to do it. Lucky number 13 for E United, five on the board for Flashpoint. And all while Benji was chasing, the rest of E United was getting this left side of Phoenix. That means all three Firebirds are down, and E United's got plenty of minions coming. Losing Sops and Mirage really hurts because now they don't really have anybody who can help deal the damage to take out the remaining members of E United. Ooh, big slap going on a man okay. ray knocks down Chaos. And now it's just three members here, but it doesn't matter, Taco. That Titan falling a little bit too low. E United 
takes care of business and finds the 2 all up against Flashpoint. Okay, Man Ray. All okay, right. okay, all right, all right. I thought they wouldn't have enough damage to hold. I mean, they didn't have enough damage to hold it out, but that was uh, an incredible snipe, kind of just reminding Chaos he was still there. E United still take the set. Yeah, I mean, E United, as we mentioned, not quite as clean in game number two, but at the end of the day, you look at the scoreboard and they found two wins. That's all they need. It doesn't really matter how it happened. They got what they needed and now are in a decent spot for Valencia coming into the final week. Remember, E United controls their own destiny, but they've got a pretty tough matchup in week five. They just need to close it out, though. They've already come this far, and I mean, it's it's one step forward, hopefully not two steps back in this scenario. Well, we got a great matchup coming your way next. It's going to be Space Station up against Team Allegiance. A lot of implications for DreamHack. Make sure you stick around through this short break.